Personal location technology has changed lots in the last 10 years and understanding the type of technology that you might have on board is really, really important. It started off with simple AIS transponders like this, which will activate a DSC signal on your boat and also uh, use your AIS receiver to put a spot on a chart plotter so you can track where the, can, uh, the man overboard is. Um, small, simple to use, can be fitted inside your life jacket and very, very effective. Uh, other technology exists though, so you might have something like a personal EPO, which is similar to this. This is a 406 megahertz and 121.5 megahertz EPO. Um, small again, can be fitted inside a life jacket. The really key thing to this to understand is the vessel that you're on is very, very unlikely to be able to pick up the signal from this. So you're going to have to rely on the authorities to tell you where the signal is coming from. And because this is a 406 megahertz EPIRB, you must register it to the vessel and or to the person that it belongs to. It's very important, that part of it. Um, you've got two technologies, and of course the natural thing then was for them to start joining those technologies together. And so you could end up with a product that's similar to this, which is an AIS transponder and a 121.5 megahertz EPIRB. The authorities won't react to the 121.5 transmission in any way, shape or form, but they will use it as a homing signal for a search and rescue asset, whether that be a helicopter or a lifeboat or something similar. Um, so a little bit bigger because it's got more to do, but uh, gives you uh, a number of options as a casualty in the water. The next generation, of course, is a combination of all of those put together, where you have an AIS transponder and a 406 megahertz EPIRB all in the same unit. Um, the registration, the same applies. You must register a product like this um, and you're going to get the best of both worlds with this in that um, the vessel that you've fallen off is going to pick up the AIS transmission and also the authorities are going to understand that there's a casualty in the water or there is an emergency and they're going to be able to react accordingly. The important thing is though with this is you must understand that the authorities will act on any 406 megahertz transmission. So if you have an accidental activation of a combined unit or a unit that only has 121.5 and 406 megahertz, you need to let the authorities know that there's been a false activation and you need to understand how to be able to turn the unit off, really important. Um, the authorities are duty bound to act on every 406 megahertz transmission. So if you're doing the Fastnet this year, you have to have one of these or something similar um, with an AIS transponder. You could use something like that or you could use something like that. There are a number of things that you need to be aware of. You need to understand the technology. You need to make sure that you and your crew all understand the technology as well. Um, as technology grows, they're getting more and more complicated. Uh, so it is really important that you make sure you have the right product for the right job.